The modern era is largely defined by the rise of computing. From the invention of the Turing machine to microprocessors, the ever-increasing ability to perform calculations has revolutionized civilization, enabling us to achieve things once only dreamed of in previous centuries. As such, we can't help but wonder what could be achieved with a computer the size of a planet. This thought experiment prompts us to imagine what engineers from the year 3000, or even an extraterrestrial civilization, might be able to create while adhering to the laws of physics. Computers have become an integral part of our lives, serving as the backbone for communication, finance, education, health, defense, and entertainment. Although we are aware of the advances in this field, it's hard to fathom what this truly means. For those of my generation who played on the PlayStation in the year 2000, the most powerful computer back then was the IBM Asai White, with a computing power of several teraflops. Flops, or floating point operations per second, are the units used to measure computing speed. This supercomputer, which took up an entire room, made us wonder how amazing it would be to have a gaming console with the computing capacity of the Asai White. Fast forward to today, you might be playing on a PlayStation, Xbox, or similar device with a computing power of up to 10 to 12 teraflops, all fitting snugly in your hands. In just 20 years, a consumer gaming console costing less than $1,000 has become more powerful than the most advanced computer of its time, which was worth millions. It goes without saying that your smartphone is far more powerful than the computers NASA used to send astronauts to the moon in 1969. This incredible progress in computing technology showcases one of the many paths a civilization can take, with a focus on increasing computing power. As a result, many futurists and technologists are intrigued by the potential future of computing, including the concept of hypercomputation. A researcher from the Future of Humanity Institute named Anders Sandberg wrote an academic article delving into this subject in detail. He points out that the laws of physics impose constraints on the activities of intelligent beings, regardless of their motivation, culture, or technology. For instance, Bremerman's limit is a constraint on the maximum computational rate that can be achieved in a finite system. Every civilization seeking to improve its computational power will be limited by the following parameters, processing power and memory densities, the finite size of computer components such as chips and circuits as dictated by physics, and the speed at which electrical signals travel through the system and the number of transitions per unit of time for a component. Furthermore, the communication delay between components can also impact efficiency as the distances between them increase. Finally, thermodynamics play a role as every computer requires energy and a means to dissipate the heat generated by calculations. Taking these factors into account, one can theoretically outline the most powerful computer an advanced civilization could build without resorting to quantum computing and sticking with classical architecture. This behemoth is called the Jupiter Brain, and as the name suggests, it's truly enormous. But before we dive into the details, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay updated on all things fascinating in technology. While the name Jupiter Brain might be slightly misleading, it does hint at the scale of the device. Logic dictates that we should construct circuits and processors using extremely strong and conductive materials. A prime candidate for this would be carbon in the form of diamond, such as nanodiamonds. To maximize computational efficiency, computers must be as large and dense as possible, which is our ultimate goal. However, a structure that is too big becomes unstable if the internal pressure surpasses the bond strength. By performing calculations with Greek letters, it is possible to determine the maximum radius of a diamond structure, 9,760 kilometers, which is slightly larger than Earth's radius of 6,371 kilometers. This is the limit for a static, rigid diamond structure, so we cannot make it any larger. However, if we introduce other forces, the radius can increase. For instance, a rotating structure will have its internal pressure counterbalanced by centrifugal force. Electromagnetism also offers the possibility of increasing the radius, but our aim here is not to be overly precise. A computer the size of a large rocky planet 
with a diameter of around 10,000 kilometers, helps us visualize this colossal machine. However, it's worth noting that, in theory, it could be even larger. By striking the right balance, we can achieve a highly efficient large-scale computing system that stretches the limits of our imagination. To power this massive machine, we need energy. Stars are excellent sources of energy, just ask life on Earth, but they're inefficient since most of it is wasted in space. Sure, a Dyson sphere could recover quite a bit, but if the goal is to power a computer planet, we could rely on nuclear fusion power plants. They be less costly, quicker to implement, and less of a colossal project than a Dyson sphere. So, we have a computer the size of a large rocky planet made of nanodiamonds powered by nuclear fusion. On its surface, there would also be a protective layer to shield it from radiation, as well as radiators to disperse heat and possibly other cooling systems, such as liquid helium. When we optimize matter to its maximum computational capacity, we're talking about Compatronium. A planet-sized computer made of Compatronium would be capable of executing around 10 to the power of 49 operations per second. And let me tell you, that's a lot. Now imagine turning it on, and what happens? Nothing at first. But then, upon activation, the superintelligent artificial intelligence the size of a planet comes to life. It is soon revealed that it was built by the chief engineer who has been working on the project for over 200 years. The process of creating the AI didn't actually take 200 years, but from the moment of its activation, it immediately began to understand its origins and the history of its creation, like kind of conscious. It proceeded to simulate the complete timeline of human evolution up to its creation in a blink of an eye. Currently, we find ourselves immersed in this very simulation. In essence, the goal is to understand what is allowed by the laws of physics to maximize computational power and learn how to build such a computer in a fun and informative way. However, the essential question remains why we would create one, which requires us to speculate about the motivations of a post-human civilization. Today, high computational power is essential for modeling complex systems, solving mathematical and scientific problems, creating vast artificial neural networks for machine learning, and providing entertainment with video games and virtual worlds. We can extrapolate that a planet-sized computer would be used for all these functions, as well as others we cannot imagine due to our limited perspective as 21st century primates. The exciting part is imagining the potential outcomes of such immense computational power. For instance, let's consider artificial intelligence. The human brain is the most complex organic structure we know of in the universe. Converting its complexity into computational power gives us a number of about 10 to the power of 16 or 10 to the 17th power operations per second. Today's supercomputers already surpass this with the most powerful reaching, 4 times 10 to the power of 17 operations per second. Of course, the brain has other advantages, such as energy efficiency, small size, computational density, and parallel processing. In short, more than just raw computing power is needed to produce general intelligence like ours. If there are no fundamental obstacles to creating general intelligence using silicon-based systems, a planet-sized computer could possess inconceivable intelligence. A fraction of a second of its thought might be equivalent to 100,000 years of human progress, maybe even more. This is purely speculative, but let's bring video games and simulation into the concept of a planet-sized computer to really get our minds racing. Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom wrote a now-famous article on the simulation hypothesis titled Are We Living in a Computer Simulation? In it, he estimates that the total cerebral activity of all human lives from the beginning would amount to approximately 10 to the 36 power operations per second, which is significantly less than a planet-sized computer with its 10 to the 49th power operations per second. Such a computer would theoretically be capable of simulating the consciousness of every person who has ever lived, using less than one millionth of its computing power for just a second. I also made a video about it, by the way, I'll add it just right here and in the description below. Imagine how trivial it would be to simulate the entirety of human history and why stop at just one version? 
with energy costs being negligible, billions of parallel simulations could be run without straining the planet's sized computer at all. Nearly every historical variation, alternate timelines, and counterfactual chronologies could be repeated over and over, creating a multiverse of simulations that could also house the digitized consciousness of the beings who created the planet-sized computer in the first place. As a civilization evolves, it may become more advantageous for individuals to exist in digital form rather than biological form. One objection to the simulation hypothesis is that it would require too much computing power for a civilization to achieve, but this is clearly not the case, at least not for those who possess a planet-sized computer or even something smaller, like an asteroid-sized one. The theoretical existence of such an object makes our reality much more likely to be a simulation, unless we're missing some critical parameters or variables that we have yet to discover. In conclusion, the concept of a planet-sized computer raises fascinating possibilities for the future of humanity. Will we one day create such a device, perhaps in the form of a PlayStation 25? Feel free to share your thoughts on the concept in the comments and whether you think it's something humanity will eventually achieve. If you're still here and enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to not miss the future videos on the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.